Hello, it's Melissa with Melissa Peterson Designs. We're going to move on to the next part of our project. Um, in case you are just joining in and you didn't go to the first video series where I showed back to the basics on how I painted the back side of the board, I did one coat of paint in Coffee Bean, Dixie Bell's Coffee Bean. I did uh, two coats of sealer and then I attached my my label which is actually my business card and I also attached I also attached a sawtooth hanger and then I put the tape back on over this so that way I know on the other side where the top and bottom is so I'm going to make sure I have the top at the top side here and then I went back and I painted this over with two coats of Dixie Bell's coffee bean and then I did one coat of sealer on this and um, then we stopped there and then we went on to the next to the how I designed came up with the design and now we're going to move on and I'm going to actually get ready for my stenciling I use a duck contact paper I like the marble and um, it's just easier for me and my silhouette cuts up, cuts up to 12 inches and I do not use a mat for mine um, I do this is like a 20 inch wide and I think it's as long as like when I first bought it was like as long as 15 feet so I can get quite a few stencils um, for this this roll of contact paper but for the size of the P I'm gonna go ahead and just measure about a 13 inch wide strip so I have a little bit of a buffer on my cutter okay I'll measure to that line I'll go ahead and cut it Do my best cut along the line. And so now when I go upstairs with my laptop with my computer and my design, I'll uh, feed the stencil this way into the machine without a mat or a cutting board because I have a Silhouette Cameo 3 so I don't need one. Um, and if you have a different brand and have to do smaller images or have to piece them together, that might be another issue we'll have to work on in the private group and we can figure out how to how to do that as well so um, my P is probably going to take up maybe about this much space so then I'll have this left over for another project I can save this and uh, use it down the road so I'll be back and uh, we'll get started again see you in this little bit okay hello it's Melissa with Melissa Peterson Designs I actually went ahead and cut both Design. So I've got one with letter P and one with the rest of the stencil cut out in the partial circle. So I'm going to go ahead and show you how I weave them. Um, with the P, it's going to be done a little bit different. We're going to use the PVPP method. The paint, I always get this mixed up, the paint vinyl paint peel process. So let me check and see where my, oh, no, that's the actual design. It gets a certain times of day here that I have trouble seeing where my things cut. There we go. So we're going to paint, we're going to paint, we're going to actually pull, we're going to leave the P in and we're going to pull the outer part of the stencil out. Just like that. Okay, and I'm going to go ahead and trim this part off so I can save this small piece here so we can use it for scraps if we need to later. Because sometimes we lose the, the letters and we have to sometimes go back and cut. So I can always save that and reuse it. Just, I use pottery tools and I also use a dental pick for my um, weeding. That's up to you. It's kind of what I started out with. And that one's got a little wrinkle, so I'm just going to try and fix it before we apply it. There, just like that. Okay, so 
that is our P. Now, let me grab my transfer paper because I want to keep this neat. So I use clear contact paper for my transfer paper. Transfer paper. And I'm not going to get the whole thing in here, but I can get the majority of it, which is okay. Um, I reuse these over and over again until they lose their stickiness. And then I start over and I cut off a new sheet. And I usually prime it on my kitchen counter until it loses the stickiness. If you don't have any fur babies at home, you can actually probably prime it on your furniture. And I'll probably prime quicker. So, just get that on there really good. I'm going to double check. Yep, we got that at the top side. I just want to make sure i got the tape sticking out so I can see where the top and bottom is. I'll go ahead and pull the backing off carefully because I don't have that bottom one on the transfer tape, so i got to be careful with that one. And we're going to have to kind of eyeball where we want this. We just got to watch for the tape for the top and bottom. And just kind of estimate where the center is. I'd say about right there. So, okay, if I get bubbles here, that's one great thing about the PVP method. I can go back and fix that a lot easier. Because I know right there is a mess. So I'm just going to do like what I did the first time. I'll just kind of roll that up. And then just kind of flatten it out. Be careful not to scratch with your utensils on there. Just like that. Okay, let me get this situated. There we go. I'll save this for later. Boy, that's seen better days. Okay. For this, I'm going to go ahead and use Mod Podge to uh, burnish because we're not going to, um, we could use a background, but I want to go ahead and make sure this is kind of glued down is what I want to do. All the directions. I want to make sure those edges are going to be crisp and clear. I think I like the setup of the camera better this time. I got a little bit higher. Okay, make sure and smooth that out so we don't have any rough ridges from the Mod Podge. I got a little bit too much there, so that's why I need to smooth it down better. So like I said, if you've got any questions, just feel free to answer in the group. You can always shoot me an email too if you're not in the group. I hope you do join in the group, in our private Facebook group. That way we can troubleshoot if you have any troubles. We can figure it out. You can show off your projects in there. Okay, I got a little bit of a paint boogie there, so I'm going to just pull it up like that and just smooth it out. And then just make sure my edges are all burnished in all the directions just like that and we'll let that Mod Podge dry and then we're going to come back and we'll start painting over the P and I'll show you how we get started on the blending so I'll see you in just a few minutes hello we are back okay so we're doing the PVP P method basically for this uh, part of the background um, we put our little the monogram on there the, the initials this is like in I think it's in Baskerville and um, I've done Mod Podge over this to burnish the edges. Let me double check here and make sure I'm on okay. I think I got off. Well, shoot. I hope, yeah, we can, you can see me. So um, we're going to go to our next color because we start with the, the darkest and then we work our way up to, the, to white. So I'm going to use Dixie Belle's Mud Puddle. 
It won't take very much. We um, will do one coat, maybe two. And I did not grab the brush I wanted to use. Hang on a second. I'm saving my Klingon brush for blending. So I'm not ready to use that yet. So I'm just going to use a regular square brush. It's going to take a little bit longer to paint since it's smaller, but I want to save the big brush for the, the super fun part. So we're going to paint the top side of this all the way around. And I'm going to do my best to stick with the grain. We'll go from top to bottom. And if we need to do two coats, we'll come back and do a second coat. We'll kind of see. If you get a little bit over the edges, don't worry about that for now. But we're definitely going to go up to the edges. And just work our way down right over our stenciled P. Okay. Here we go. One good coat. We'll let that dry. See how it dries. If we need a second coat, we'll come back and do a second coat. We definitely want a good coverage around the stencil. If you have to kind of go up and down, then when you get done, finish it off with going in the same direction. Of course, I'm being paranoid. Yep, the top side. <laughs> Just want to make sure. Because if we mess up, I would probably go back and end up redoing the sawtooth hanger. And then apologize for that label. I don't know. So far that hasn't happened, but I'm not going to put it past me. happening one day because definitely you, I mean you technically could go back and sand the label off later if you messed up like that but who wants to do that so we're going for a hundred percent coverage on the top side of this I am getting a little bit off on the edges but I'm not going to worry about that we can clean that up later And this is all part of the background. And you notice how we got little lines there. Just leave them there and we'll come back and we'll do a second coat because I can tell already we're going to need to. Sometimes that happens when you go from dark to light. And I'd rather do thin coats, do a couple thin coats, and do super heavy coats and have issues. Okay, so we're over our letter. There we go. I'll put my brush in the baggie, save it for later. And you see, I did get a little bit on the edges. That's no problem. We'll fix that later. So we're going to let that dry. We'll come back and do a second coat. So I'll see you in just about five minutes. Hello, it's Melissa again. The first uh, coat, of, coat of mud puddle has dried. So we're going to go ahead and do a second coat. Make sure we can see everything first before I move on. Oh, come on. There we go. Okay, let me grab my brush. Shake it up again a little bit more. We're just going to do the very same process. And we'll let this dry and then we can come back and we'll have some fun. The next coat, uh, remind me, I, I'll need a, to do a little light sanding on that. I did forget to do that. Just a light coat, I think. along the stencil good. Just like that. 
them on both sides and go across the edge. Sometimes I think painting on the lid is more trouble sometimes, we'll see. There we go. I don't like wasting paint either. Got any questions let me know we're not ready to peel this yet because while this piece stencil is down is where the magic is going to happen we got to get our second coat on first because when we peel the pea we're going to have that nice pretty dark brown underneath just like that. So now we'll go ahead and let that dry and then we'll come back and have some fun. So we'll see you in about five more minutes. Hello, while, I was, while this was drying the second coat, I realized I made a mistake with what I told you the last clip. I am not going to uh, sand this because I really don't want to break the seal around this yet, um, around my letter P. So I, um, I messed up on that, I'm sorry. But what we are going to do is apply a coat of sealer on this and then we're going to let it sit for a couple of hours so that way it can kind of cure a little bit before we do our blending on here. Um, we will get the blending done today because when, that, when that's dry then this will be removed because I don't want this sitting on here overnight just in case. I don't want to risk um, the adhesive on there. Oh, I just shook my sealer up. Whoops wasn't even thinking I was thinking that was paint so I've got my Dixie Dixie, Dixie uh, Bell clear coat one of those things was it do as I say not as I do yeah so don't shake up your sealer which I absentmindedly just did we're gonna do one clear coat on here let it sit and cure for a couple of hours and then we'll come back on and then we'll have some fun with our blending so and that way, when we do our blending, we'll also be using some water. That way I don't have to worry about accidentally um, pulling any of the paint off below it because this coat will um, help protect it a little bit. Because we're going to do a little bit, it's, it's not really blending of paints, it's more of a um, kind of like a glazing but I'm going to do it with paint you could do it with glaze you could probably do it with stain Dixie Bell's no paint gel stain you could probably do that on there that look really nice on here but I'm planning I think at this time I'm going to stick with the coffee bean when we move on to our next step so we will see I'll see you back in a couple of hours on my end and uh, if you have any questions let me know Hello, we are back. We are ready to start having some fun with the blending. I'm going to see how this paint turned out because I've had it in the baggie since we used that and I think we're okay. I'm going to use my mister and I'm going to put actually some water and kind of water it down. Because for this next technique you can either use glaze, you could probably use a stain like no paint no paint gel stain like and maybe in black smoke would look good on here even though it's black it, we just need a dark color we want this to show through so let's see how this stirs up oh yeah so we're gonna keep our mister handy because if we get a little heavy-handed we're gonna use the mister to um, thin out the paint on the board so I'm gonna go ahead I'm gonna stand up here so I can see what I'm doing I'm gonna go ahead and spray my board down and I don't think we're gonna have to add any more paint. It's not gonna take very much, I don't believe. So we're just gonna start from the middle, and I usually work from the middle and go up, and work from the middle and go down. And just like that. And we're gonna water that down.
and we're just going to keep going back and forth until we get it the way we want it. And if it gets, starts getting like with the brush is getting tacky, we will just add a little bit more water for my mister. And I try and go straight across. I gotta be careful with my, um, I tend to go in curves. And this is where you kind of get the look, a different look every time because if you're kind of heavy handed with the brush when you're doing this, you'll end up wiping more paint off and get a lighter look. If you're uh, a little light handed, you'll have a little bit of a darker look so you're not getting that much off or you're not putting that much on. It kind of depends on what you're doing. It's just fun to play around with. So yeah, we're definitely not adding any more paint on. And this is the, the Dixie Bells Coffee Bean. The very same color we used at the base. And we're just gonna thin it out a little bit more. And just kind of keep going till we get the way we like it. I just keep going up and down and working my way up, working my way down. So it's kind of all evenly, or looks all even. Make this one more time. So go for just a little bit lighter look. I really like this brush for this. And as long as your brush is, is gliding smoothly, you've got enough water on there. That starts sticking, then you need to either wet your brush down a little bit or you need to wet your board down a little bit. I think after this, I think I'm going to be done. Okay. Boy, that looks in the camera brown again. I hope it doesn't look like that to you because from here it doesn't. When we get done and this dries, we can do a little light sanding also before we take our pee off. And if we decide that's still too dark, we can always come back and add a little bit more water and kind of keep working with it. Mm. One more time. Remember, the P is going to be a dark, solid coffee bean. This right here, I'm not sure if you can see it very well on the camera, it's kind of a blend of the mud puddle with coffee bean. Coffee bean. The mud puddle is kind of showing through. When we pull that P up, it's going to be solid. Okay, I didn't go clear across, I had a little brush stroke that just stopped right there at the end. Okay, I'm calling it quits on that. So we're gonna let this dry and I'll come back when it is dry, okay? And then we'll go from there. Okay, we are back. She is dry. Now there's two ways we can go about and making this a little bit more special. Um, I'm gonna try first my 220 grit sand block. Um, if this doesn't get the look I want, I will go back and use the baby wipe and see how it works. We're gonna go slightly across this and kind of rub back some of this dark paint and see if we can get a more rustically blended look that I wanted. 
So just go back and forth. Usually I'm a little bit more heavy handed in the middle than on the end. I want to try this first before I use the baby wipe. I think I might be using the baby wipe. So that gives you a, bit, a little bit more of that background color showing through. So I got a couple sheets here. I'm going to work from the middle out. And if you think you've gone too far, don't fret because you know you've got the P there. You can still technically go back and do your dark color over again and just keep playing with it till you get the look you want. Yeah, I still like the baby look, white look better. And I see I got a little careful. I got a little heavy handed there. It's not to avoid this strip here. just playing around with it and just kind of seeing what kind of look you like and just like I said before I always tell my clients that each one is different it just kind of depends on heavy hands I get so we just kind of stick with the basic color family and just kind of go from there so that's why I always ask if you want me to use browns or you want me to use blacks and grays Careful of this area. And actually, I think I might do this again. So I'm not crazy about that or that. Yeah, I want it more uniform. Easier. I think we're going to try it again. I like how that wood grain shows through. Go the same, same direction each time, back and forth. And actually, I think I'm starting to like it better. turn out a little bit differently there's just no, no two the same which is what's nice about these 
everyone's is going to be unique. in this area and this little strip. I like that because we're also going to have the white lettering on top. So remember, you can always do the glaze instead of the paint like I did. And you can glaze it on. Now this part I don't like, so I'm going to have I'm going to have to come back. Overall, it's getting better. Those two strips are just too much. Let's see if I can fix that. It means doing the whole thing again, but that's okay. Grab my paint in my container. I'm going to put a little bit more water in here and thin it down than before. brush was already damp. Okay, so we're basically going to be doing the same thing. You know, it's the first time I only dipped my brush in there once. I believe. I don't remember going back for more paint. I just kept adding more water. I like the dark look, so I think that's what I'm kind of going for. I think that was maybe too light for me. So let's see if we can do this while it's still wet. I might go ahead and just use my paint, my uh, baby wipe, and just go ahead and do this now while it's still wet and see what we get. Is it coming to the house? Okay, I'm just going to keep lightening this up with more water and making it more glaze like. See that? There we go. And that's why I go through drop claws. So 
So yeah, getting this look could have easily been done with the glaze also, if you if you've got glaze, a dark glaze, or if you've got the the stuff on hand to make your own glaze, you can get the glaze medium and then actually add your color paint, like Dixie Belle's uh, coffee bean, and you can make your own glaze. I'm just kind of cheating here and using water. little bit more loosened up there a little bit a little bit dark okay getting there let me try something go back with the rag see if you want to go really light like that you can do that I think that's too light for my taste so I'm gonna go back over it again and just make it a little bit darker The look I wanted right there. Just get my lines all parallel. And then I just learn to leave it alone. And I got one there I don't like right there. I think we got it, guys just like that. I think that's the look I was wanting for this one. So um, when this dries I'll come back and I'll kind of go around and clean up the edges with a smaller brush and use the coffee bean. Um, some of this did kind of leak over. I'm just going to look for any drips since I got a little crazy there. There we go. And we'll just let that dry and we'll come back and we'll peel the pea and then um, make sure there's no uh, bleed throughs so I gotta clean up first and once I make sure that's okay we'll do one coat of sealer and then we'll call it for today so I'll be back in a little bit probably about another 15-20 minutes I think I was ready to find my uh, pottery tool I'm gonna go ahead and do a light sanding kind of loosen this up a little bit and we're gonna go ahead and peel the pea and then if that works out okay I will go ahead and do a little sealing. So let's see how this works out. So very gently, I don't want to poke any holes. I'm just trying to get to the layer of the vinyl itself and pull slowly. our geese. We have a family of geese that live in our pond. They come back every year. And there she is. Move any loose areas and we're going to go ahead and seal it. I think we're good. What you think? So I've got my clear coat. We're going to do a coat of this. We're going to let this sit overnight and then tomorrow we'll come back and work on stenciling the front part. Okay, try and get so I don't go over it too many times there. Good and protect. 
protect it before I put another stencil on here. And if I have to tomorrow, I'll come back and we'll do a light sanding and do another coat of sealer. We'll kind of, I guess we'll kind of wait and see on that. We did put a lot on here today. I want to make sure it gets good and dry. Okay, stop, 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 stop. Okay, I'm gonna leave that alone. We're gonna see how it dries, and we'll just kind of go from there. But there she is, and I've got my stencil already cut out. I got sealer on my hands. I went ahead and cut the same size piece that I've used for my pea. And I'm cutting, and you can see here I got the border of the circle on that area, and you can kind of see where it stops on both sides. When it comes time, I'll go ahead and cut just above here and just below here, and then we'll have our center. And we can kind of work on placement and work on that tomorrow. So, I think I got something on there. So that's it for now. So if we need to come back and do a second coat of sealer, I will know once this, once this coat dries. We'll kind of play it by ear. But normally I just do one coat. So if you've got any questions, let me know and um, I'll be happy to answer them. See you after a bit. Hey, hey, hey. One coat of sealer is going to do it. I am really thrilled with how this is turning out. So, um, got the one coat of sealer on, and we're going to let this sit. I got a little bit of debris right there. Got going to let this sit and uh, overnight, and then we'll come back tomorrow, and we will apply our stencil and uh, finish her up. So, if you got any questions, just let me know. But I just want to let you know that we, this is it. Here's our blended background, our rustically blended background. So we just gotta finish her off. Any questions, let me know. I'll talk to you guys later.